Greetings, mortals. I am Natus, one of the rules of the underworld, or specifically the rule of Manga Hell. And today we will be reacting to the newest chapter of One Piece, chapter 1041, titled Kumurasaki. That's a weird thing to be focusing on when we are having the final battle between Luffy and Skydor, but oh well, what can you do, I suppose? So, anyways, let's get into this chapter to, and see what Kumurasaki is going to be doing in it. So the first page in this chapter, we have actually putting on her, on her, what's his name, uh, in her carpet, basically. As she punches Yunji and Niji, where the, 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 saying, this is for bullying Sanji-san, putting punch. <laughs> Wait, that's actually gotta be a technique now? Putting punch? Is it strong or is it weak? I mean, it seems to have hit Yunji and Niji pretty well, because in effect, their face is not, you know, Kind of honestly doing the similar face that Sanji had when they were beating him up, so I guess it has to be very powerful. <laughs> but yeah, now I'm questioning if she actually said that or if she's just speaking to herself. But yeah, anyways, those two are punched. As then we get to the proper chapter, as we have Nair saying, What has he learned? As then we have uh, Morris saying, I spoke with Zunisha briefly, but I do still do not have the whole picture. Then we get a, a flashback to the communication as, as we have Zunisha walking slowly as the moon says like a panicking, I'm guessing, because that seems to be, they're making noise, so I'm guessing they're panicking. As there was Zunisha saying, Momonosuke, I await your orders. I have come to fight by your side. <laughs> as a guy, like, they're panicking, like, what the fuck must they, what must they think when they're seeing it? And you know, this chapter is real, you know, I'm gonna be honest, Zunisha is not all that, like, impressive in terms of feed-wise, but when you actually look at uh, Zunisha in these panels, he is fucking intimidating. Like, my god, is he. So yeah, anyways, then we have Yamato be like, Incredible Momonosuke kun you really can do, you can really speak to it. Just like Oni predicted, you're the one that's meant to lead the world to its dawn. Oh great, another prophecy, fi prophecy thing. Oh great, as if that wasn't too many, as if we don't have that too many of this arc already. Yeah, I feel like if we actually had more prophecy, if we actually cut all of these prophecy stuff, we would actually be able to get a lot of the villains have more of a the dynamic fight in rather than just, well, uh, five, maybe. But yeah, I guess what can we do really? I guess this is important Lord stuff, so it has to happen. So anyways, then we have Mercy saying, I learned why I cannot die here, from my father's journal, but it seems he tore out the most crucial pages. Oh, the whole plot must not be revealed yet, supplies. Oh, must we must just love them, aren't we all? But yeah, anyways, then we have Mercy saying, What made Father and Roger laugh at the final island? The true importance of the, this task still eludes me. It's not like Father was an all-seeing prophet. If he was still alive, would he still want to open one or, or under these circumstances? It's like, I am not as wise as he was. I won't really call him wise, but if you want to call him wise, sure, you're his son, so I guess you're gonna have to be calling him wise. Is everyone saying that? I think of the potential danger just to the people of Wano, and it makes me want to keep the border shut. Does that make me a coward, Yamato? As Yamato realizes something, or is like wants is looking for a response to one of his statements, which is to be fair, hers response are pretty logical. Like I don't really see why he wouldn't be questioning it. Honestly, not questioning it would be a bigger problem. So anyways, then we have uh, third floor, castle interior, corridor battle, as we have seen for Kokojo on the floor, bleed, being sad and fired, like, ah! Oh! And he's also finally goes from, you know, his stone cold bass, he's like, gasp! And then I'm like, victory, Rizzo! And then I was just like, ah, it's hot, it's not, it's, it's not hot! Not hot at all! <laughs> I guess he's finally into the flame from it. As then we have, as then we have Ugarashi screaming, ha ha, in this era, even Shinobi are free to choose Fukurokuju. So I guess he's not like doing the whole victory speech or the victory speech to Fukurokuju because, you know, he's having a fire now. As then we have, we have Jimmy showing up, he's like, 
Hey, you won the summer. Why are you still here? And then we have one saying, You are one of Luffy's daughters. Pan, pan. We must hurry. The preparations are almost complete. So, yeah, I guess this is coming from that, which I do wonder if they're going to just take Fukuoshi with them or if they're just going to like them to be burned to death. Which is actually really dark to think about, but we'll see. I mean, this is one piece. I doubt that many of the characters will die. But anyways, then we have second floor treasury. Blast it all! Fukuoshi, are you good for nothing, ninja? I guess it's. I guess for. I just. I guess, uh, can't. Uh, or just finally getting patient with Fukuoshi at this point. And then we have, where the hell is he? As then we see Komasaki on the floor? She seems to be on the floor right now. But yeah, anyways, then we have, uh, 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 oh, just saying, he better not have a skin on his own. Was that tremor earlier due to Kanjiro? <sighs> With any luck, this island will soon be history. As then we have, a. Uh, uh, Komosaki continuing playing her banjo, or her, or her summer sand, I think it's called, but yeah. As as in, we just like, Komosaki, why does this look like the time for music? Well, depending on the type of character you are, it does make sense. I mean, how? Isn't one of the ninjas actually a character uses a gun, uh, a gun banjo or gun summer weapon? So maybe it does make sense for music. Plus, a boo and booger here, and those two are mus using music to fight, but yeah. As then we have Orochi screaming, Knock it off this instant! How can you be content string away in that damn mask? Li this is life or death! It's not like you always have to wear it! Take it off, woman! <laughs> he is like, woman, but that's very much what he should be saying right now. As then we have Orochi saying, I still can't tell if you're the real Komazaki or some kind of rap wraith. As you can just apply it, and then we see some of the uh, building collapsing. And it is, I was like, dying so long, and I was like, oh god! As it all crashed on Orochi, and as the smoke pounds up, as then Orochi comes from that debris, is like, why? Damn it! Why can't I transform? I can't get loose! Pant, pant! You were so distracted. And then we have Komazaki saying, You were so distracted that you still haven't noticed. And then Orochi on the floor be like, Ugh, Cuff, Komazaki, you half wit. Why are you just sitting there? Get these debris off me. As, uh, as Komazaki says, I used to see, I used a sea stone nail to ensure you wouldn't be able to change into that monstrous form of yours. And then we have Orochi screaming, What are you saying? I thought you loved me. Then that slap in the act two uh, told you that she doesn't love you. I mean, I mean, what exactly did, did you think? Okay, did, oh wait, wait, isn't wait is Orochi delusional or something? Because I mean, he should know Komosaki doesn't love him. And then we have Komosaki be like, "Love you? Don't be ridiculous. There is isn't even a shred of affection for you in my heart." As Orochi's like, "What?" I guess actually, if she did have some affection for him or something, I don't know. Where. Anyways, then we have uh, Komosaki like, it's almost poetic that your favorite song is also Moon Princess. And then we get a flashback with Komosaki. Well, I talk, but well, what was the name again? Uh, Hiyori, yes, Hiyori, playing for all that. like, it's always like, I love that tune, Hiyori. And she so was like, really? It's called Moon Princess. I'll practice it even harder now. As then we have uh, Hiyori or Kosai saying, he cherished it too, Kuzuki Oden, my father. And I was like, the father? <laughs> As he gets like a bit, like his eyes are starting to, like he gets a nose, and he's like, ah! As then we have Hiyori saying, how could I pass up his smile when I play it for you? So yeah, I suppose the theory about uh, Mosaki like hiding her face for uh, not to give you know give away to what her true feelings are when she plays this song. True. Which I have a question. Didn't Orochi know Hiyori was Ko uh, he Komosaki was Hiyori Onen's daughter? Because I'm pretty sure it was known. Unless if Kanjo didn't get to the to revealing it yet, but I'm pretty sure it was known. I mean he, that I mean 
Conjure definitely knew about that, but why doesn't Orochi know? Wasn't he informed of that? I guess he wasn't informed yet. I mean, I guess he was pretty quickly moving everything along, so I guess he wasn't able to, but all right, it's still a bit weird. So yeah, anyways, then we come to a different area as we have Castle Basement. As then we have, he's saying, live, as we see, like, these are shootings like Live On, Kiku. And then we see, uh, Iso finding that, that weird mask, the guy who has like a weird, like a giant mask, Sipina member, as he shoots that member, as well as that Sipina member shoot, get, gets one of his finger pieces off on Iso, as they both fall on the ground and collapse, as the boss is also on the floor, be like, Ugh, damn you, Iso, as we see Iso on the floor bleeding, as he, this Sipina member is like, Ugh, which, I wait. Did these masks move before? Because I'm pretty sure these ma masks look like they're moving right now. But yeah. Anyways, then we see uh, that uh, mask figure being on the ground. I I don't know if that's his face. It's kind of doubt because of the artificial panels, but I think it's just supposed to be him on the floor. It's not it's supposed to be. We don't actually his face. Uh, at least I don't think so. It's like Maha. I'm guess that's the name of the CP9 member, Maha. Maybe it's on a fish or something, maybe it's on the house. I don't really know. Like, I think they, it's honestly pretty weird. So, anyways, then we have uh, the boss be like, taking one of us down with you was your plan from the start. Damn it! As then we have the boss coming to Maha. As then we have uh, the boss saying, Why is a surviving member of the White Bee crew helping these upstarts? Hurry! Hurry! Get Nico Rob. I guess that's what Maha is saying. As then we have uh, uh, hearing the boss saying ring ring pant pant is it like panting is like what is it now I just got one it's just one thing after another as the other sleep number is like listen this is a direct order from the five elders as then we have the boss back from the five elders as then we have see the guy the top hat guy who doesn't seem to be with the rest of the those uh, informants, as he's saying, you are to eliminate Straw Hat Luffy immediately. As then we have uh, the boss be like, what are you talking about? Straw Hat is in the middle of fighting Kaido. You can't expect me to interfere in, a, in that battle. It's impossible. So yeah, I guess even the even the CP9 members are like, which CP9 members are actually really like calm, like stoic. But even they're like, what are you saying? I'm not going to battle with those guys. So if anyone thought that the CP9 members were anywhere around uh, at uh, Yonko, they could put up a fight. Nope, they can't. Definitely can't. So yes. Uh, anyways, then we have the, the the boss responding as we come to the top hat guys. Like we are aware of the difficult. Uh, or is it the other guy? Actually, nothing about it. It's the boss guys again. It's like we are aware of the difficulties. As then we see another figure coming. From the smokes here, like pant pant. As then we have the top head guy, I'm thinking, saying, The world class nature of it, its battle is what it makes this important. Don't you get it? This order is necessary, be with precaution. And then we see X Tray coming from the. I mean, I think it's actually X Tray, like half half. Did they expect me to just go down empty handed? So I guess it, it X Tray is gonna have continue his battle against the, the CP9 man boss. Which, you know, this is probably going to be because of the Dara Fruit and all that, since it's been said how good the recovery is on the Dara Fruit when it comes to the Beast Pirates, but I do actually have to wonder if that means that the top, Toby Roper have also already recovered and are currently running from the fire, because they were not that way before Axtrake was, and honestly, between the CP9 and the Straw Hats, I would say that the CP9 members will probably be more deadly when it comes to attacks. Okay, maybe page one and Ulti would still be knocked out, but I feel like they would have been, they would have already like recovered, well, well, I feel like the rest would have already recovered or something like that by now. But yeah, I guess we'll see. I mean, I, maybe it's, maybe they're not gonna appear until the next cover spread or something. We'll see. Or maybe it's gonna be when they're gonna have like the whole jail scene or something like that. I don't really know. Or we'll see what's gonna happen. So anyways, then we get the uh, top head uh, telling the boss, we aren't privy to all the details. 
As then we see the boss thinking to himself, what's the deal with this crew? Well, I would say what's the deal with this captain, since I feel like he's the one who is more like the noteworthy one. Although I guess he's maybe referring to the fact that whole, you know, whole, they, they showing up pretty much like changed the whole doomsday scenario with the beast parts and big one part together to, you know, basically the beast parts being wiped out. So yes, anyways, then we get to the narrative again, counting to a different shot. And then we have them saying elsewhere in the basement. And then we have someone saying, now there, there's nowhere to left to run. The whole castle is burning up. And then we see a picture of um, Izo, well, a panel of Izo and Kinema uh, on the floor, unconscious as, as then we have, I'm guessing, Usopp or Hamlet saying, I won't let you die. Just hold on a little longer. As we have Usopp saying, I guess that's what Usopp was saying, is like, Hamlet, we need to get out. This place is coming down. As Hamlet's like, leave it to me, master. I guess that even these uh, other guys are gonna be like responding to uh, Thomas Francis' master. So as then we have uh, cut to the outside of the organization, which has actually been a while. As we see uh, 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 Nekoma Muji saying, Wanda, Kara, let's go back into the dome. As like, right. We don't want to get thrown off the edge. As then we have see a. Uh, uh, a wand I'm saying, is this island going to hold? Probably not, honestly, all the destruction, the burning, and everything else, it's, yeah, but it's possible that it's gonna crumble to the very, uh, to the very end of it, pretty soon. So as they're going inside, as then we have, um, uh, is Frankie saying, hey, you're still alive down there, right? As he, Zoro, as he uses his uh, grappling hand to pull Zoro up, I guess Zoro was about to fall, but luckily in the last second, uh, Frankie shot up. As then, Frank, as then we see unconscious Zoro, as Frankie's like, you you tell me you're still kicking? Which I don't know if that's the case, like he's still unconscious. They really want to keep it vague on what's actually happening with Zoro. I hope it's not going to be one of those things where it doesn't actually lead to anything, but maybe it is. I have no idea, we'll see. So anyways, then we have, uh, we cut to another location as we have dome interior, frontal lobe, floor B, beast parts bath. Alright, like is that in the bathhouse? As then, uh, as then we have someone saying, we got her. I'm gonna say Zeus is like, what a, co as then we have someone saying, what a commotion, that shockwave was insane. Jeffrey and the others must have taken down Big Mom. What's happening? With the fire, I hope Usopp and the rest are okay. And then Zeus be like, Mama! <laughs> so I guess he still has some love for her. But anyways, then we get to an old bickering couple between Zeus and Mon Nami as we have uh, Nami saying, Remember Zeus, who matters more now, me or Big Mom? And she's like, Wah, you do Nami, of course! And then we have uh, Thomas saying, Hik Himaru, Komachiyo, you two were amazing! And then we have Mama saying, tell the OBO radio, just watch out for the breeze riding right, down. As we actually see some rocks falling down, as Speed's like, Master, come here! <laughs> I guess she's aware of the safety of the lolly. Alright, good. So anyways, then we have Marco be like, we can't drop our guards yet. This island is still the most dangerous place on the planet. <laughs> well, to be fair, it's not going to be an island very soon anymore, but we'll see. So yes, anyways, then we see the some of the soldiers back. They really beat Big Mom, boss, captain! As they're all celebrating. As they're more of those time to fall down. It's like, whoa! As then we have kid on the fabric, Pan Pan. Should we brace ourselves? Kylo's still up there as he's on the floor. As as Kylo is also on the floor, it's like, huff, huff. No, we are done our part. But it's like, even if Carlo is the one to, that comes back down, I have no strength left to put up a fight. So yeah, I do wonder what this is leading to. Now, considering that everyone is currently a project one area, I would imagine this would be like, meaning that Luffy's the victory over Carlo would be happening in a way where he gets beaten and also falls down similar to Big Mom. Although considering the fact that Big one, this kind of defeat, I do wonder if that would really work for both of them. But we'll see. So yeah, anyways, we get then we cut to the clash between Luffy and Cardo. As then we have 
have um, them all going in the back as, as Luffy's like, pant pant is then we have Kai saying, hey, did you feel that? They actually did it. Burp. Is that a burp? As then we have Kylo screaming like, Lin Lin, they beat her. As then that screaming sends Luffy away a bit as he's like, pant pant, Jackie and they damn really are amazing. Surprising to see that Luffy will have that kind of speech. I'm guess that's a kind of translation error thing. As then we have uh, a bit of flashback uh, speaks. As in, uh, we have Big Mom saying, Is that mouth of yours just for show? Hello! Don't you know how to speak? As Carlos is panting a bit. And remember his time with Big Mom, as we have Big Mom saying, Mama, ma, ha, ha, how old are you? Fifteen? Ah, to be young. So this is your first time teaming up with Rocks? He's a good, he's a good for nothing. Don't trust him. If something is bugging you, come tell me. The name is Lin Lin. I'm the woman who ruled the seas. <laughs> yeah, the irony. But yeah, we get a bit of a Lin Lin. And I'm not wondering if this is going to be lead to a full flashback. But we'll see. Is there a Lin Lin be like, nice to meet you. So I guess this is referring to the past and the whole working together. Now, I'm not sure if this is a translation thing. Or if it's just like, you know, actually what is accurate. By the way, Lin speaks it, so it makes it sound like the rock school were like kind of in and out type of school. Like, oh, Lin is the strongest member of the rocks were kind of like an in and out type of thing. Like, they were part of the crew, but they were also very likely to leave and then join up again. But yeah. So I guess this is gonna be like referring to the flashback. Huh? So I'm guessing we're gonna get it very soon at least. And then we have uh, Luffy and Carl be like panic and hoofing. As they were kind of thinking, now that I think about it, me and the old hack have a lot of history together. Oof. As then we have Kyle kind of going to weeping drugs, like, how could I let this happen? We just swore that we'll help each other. Get the wampies. Is he starts to cry. As then Luffy goes into his snake man form. As he goes there and punches Kyle in the face. As then we have Luffy saying, Gear forth, Snake Man, Gomu Gomu no Hydra! As he strikes as uh, Kaido's hat, as Kaido's like, Ugh! As then we have uh, Luffy saying, Don't talk to me about your dreams! Your dreams made the people of this country s starve! Huff huff. I'm giving Gear for one last go! I won't stop swinging until I have nothing left! Where are these punches? As then like, we have Kyle kind of thinking to himself, where are these punches coming from? As everyone think, I'm kicking you out of this country for good. As then we have now saying, first backed by Fury, Luffy's fierce onslaught. End of chapter. So yeah, this is supposedly enough for a chapter that's supposed to style Kumarasaki. We don't actually get much on it, just like. We focus on her just as much as we focus on pretty much anything else. So, yeah. So, where could this be? Now, I'm pretty sure that every fight, except for like maybe x versus CP9 member, that CP9 boss are already done. Like, I don't think there's any fight that has not been focused on. Like, I think it is over in terms of fights. So, I do... Well, actually, not think about it. There's also that number of things, but I don't think numbers matter. But we'll see where this is gonna go, but where everything else is going, but I think it's pretty much over. So yeah, this is kinda reaching the end point and the final like fight. This is got I'm guessing after this we're probably gonna get Kairos flashback and then we're gonna get like the final portions of the battles and see how this is gonna all end. Where is it gonna end? I'm not exactly sure. Honestly, I could see this being Luffy's victory, or I could also see this be Kairos victory. It's up to how you, your interpretation, I'll say. So, it's kind of interesting how Luffy says here that he doesn't care about Kyle's dreams. Uh, dreams here, which is actually the reason why it was stated by, I think Oda, Oda stated in um, one volume, I'm not, I think it was one of the earlier ones, so the very early, I think it was somewhere on, on time skip, not early ones, I think it was doing the time skip. Um, so he says the reason why Luffy doesn't kill anyone is because that will kind of be like ending their dreams or make them unable to be dream or something like that. So it says here with this, so I could see this like meaning that Kyle will actually die. 
but I'm not exactly sure. As for what's gonna happen next chapter, I predict the next chapter is gonna be like kind of a flashback because I feel like at this point we really should be getting a kind of flashback, but we'll see. So, anyways, with that said, I hope you like this video. I hope you leave a like, subscribe to this chapter more videos in the future. Tell me your thoughts on this chapter in the comments below. And with that said, I cannot wait to see all of your mortals next time. Goodbye.